Excellent. Okay, so let's go through it. Coin shuffle plus plus, peer to peer mixing and unlinkable Bitcoin transactions. This is the paper we're talking about. Uh, it's unclear if the authors are going to be able to join us. If not, they'll join us next week, hopefully. Um, yes, two weeks ago we talked about Coin Shuffle, which was the predecessor to Coin Shuffle Plus um, Plus. Coin Shuffle dealt with the issue of removing the coordinator, doing fully decentralized coin joins. But uh, the way that Coin Shuffle did it was they would shuffle addresses um, by onion encrypting them and uh, essentially mixing uh, the uh, addresses as the addresses as the encrypted addresses uh, passed across all the peers. Uh, as they passed across peers, they would be decrypted and then further shuffled. Um, and we talked about why this is a, uh, is a poor design choice, um, because it doesn't scale very well. And so as an example, we looked at Electron Cash, which had only five participants uh, in total doing coin join. So here's where we are in the Wasabi Research Club. Um, next week, we'll likely do Coin Shuffle Plus Plus again with the authors. Uh, oh, there we go. Um, so I just wanted to quickly run through uh, the DC network. Um, so the DC network was a problem uh, posed by Chom in 1988. And the idea is that three cryptographers are sitting at a table and they want to uh, anonymously convey whether or not they paid the bill. So one thing we notice about the Dining Cryptographers protocol is that it allows for anonymous communication among honest peers and only honest peers. We'll see why in a second. And it's completely resistant to traffic analysis, which is in contrast to something like the Tor network. So one more time, uh, three cryptographers sitting at a table, they need to communicate whether or not they paid for dinner. So if they didn't pay for dinner, you could think of this as a zero. And if they did, you could think of this as a one. And at the end of this protocol, we want to essentially know whether someone in this, in, in, in this uh, table paid for dinner or, or, or not. Uh, so here's how Chaum proposed uh, to do this protocol anonymously. Every single user is going to look to their right and create a hidden secret. Um, just a simple zero or one will suffice. Um, and we'll do this for all participants until there are three share, uh, uh, secrets. Um, each secret is only known by two participants. And what everyone is going to do is they're going to XOR their secrets. Uh, XOR is just simply asking, is the secret on your left different from the secret on your right? If it is, that's a one. If it's not, that's a zero. And so every single participant XORs their, uh, their value, uh, as you can see here. And they uh, speak out loud the, the value to the remaining participants. So you can see here that the orange participant has a one as a shared secret on both sides. So he's, uh, um, his message is zero. The green has a, a one on one side and a zero, so his message is one, and so forth. And there's only one additional thing we need to do for this protocol to work, which is if you, in fact, are the person that wants to convey that you paid for dinner, therefore someone paid for dinner, you just XOR the value one with whatever you have which is a fancy way of saying whatever value you have, you negate that value, you flip the bit. So in this case, what we'll do, uh, oh, and so in this case, if no one paid for dinner, um, then they'll simply say the values they have. Uh, the sum of those values will always be even, and all participants know because the sum of the value is even that no one at the table paid, so likely an NSA member paid. Um, but if you are the payer, in this case, we'll look at Orange. Orange did pay uh, for the bill. Orange is going to flip the bit. Originally, Orange was supposed to declare a zero, but now Orange is declaring a one. And so the sum is an odd number. If the sum is odd, um, then it means that it was one of the individuals at the table that was, in fact, um, uh, the, the payer. And that's good. And we know as well that this, uh, that this works because if you look from the perspective of yellow who did not pay the bill, um, yellow doesn't know, uh, you know, yellow does not know the secret, the shared secret between green and, and orange. And so yellow doesn't know uh, whether it was green or whether it was orange that in fact paid the bill given the honest, uh, given the uh, public messages. And so all yellow knows that the sum is three 
and that someone must have paid. Okay, was it either of them? It's unclear to know. So the other question we had was, why is it always even? Why is it that, you know, even if we have 800 of these people at a dinner table, and if every person only has two shared secrets with someone on their left and someone on their right, why is it that the XOR is always even if we sum the XOR values across all participants? And the reason is quite simple. Um, all participants either have a zero or a one uh, to their left and to their right. If, uh, if they have a different value, then uh, they uh, message one, and if they have the same value, they message zero. And because it's in a circle, the value must always come back to the original starting point. So um, for this reason, if, if uh, one participant goes from a zero to a one, then someone else will have to go from a one to a zero. And that's why it's always even. And this is the same uh, no matter what, uh, what, what kind of setup you have, whether you have many, many participants or just a few. So there are two problems we have to dis discuss because those are the key reasons why we don't use DC nets in any practical applications. And it's the key thing that's uh, solved in CoinShuffle++. Uh, namely, uh, the, number one is the collision of messages. So the only way this protocol works is if only one person speaks at a time or nobody speaks. So um, if, for example, let's suppose that green actually paid for half of the bill and uh, orange also paid for half. And so what they're doing is they both negate their bit when they speak out loud. Well, unfortunately, that doesn't work. Uh, what happens there is that the, um, uh, the values get negated and uh, the entire table um, gets an even sum. And so, unfortunately, uh, Yellow, uh, uh, who is the only person not in the loop that doesn't know the secret, um, is wrong, wrongly believes that the NSA paid, which is not the case. So the, 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 the big thing to understand here is that when you do a round of a DC net, you cannot have more than one person say a message. If more than one person uh, says a message, it actually garbles up both messages. Uh, so that's a pretty big problem. Um, so further, we have to talk about kicking disruptors. Uh, uh, something that a malicious entity can do, in this case Orange is a malicious, malicious entity, is simply not obey the protocol. Uh, so for example, uh, uh, reveal um, random messages or messages that are not XORs of what you have, or possibly even the opposite of the XOR that you have, purposefully garbling all the other messages. The problem in this case is that if uh, Orange does something evil, like in this case here, Green really did pay for the meal, Orange did not pay, but Orange is, is saying as though he paid. Um, the problem here is that there's no way to find out who the disruptor is in an efficient way. So in other words, Orange can disrupt uh, uh, indefinitely this, this protocol from, from happening. Uh, and that's pretty unfortunate. Um, so yeah, so who disrupted the message? Um, it's, it's unclear. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, in this case, yellow is just unaware of what's going on because yellow doesn't know whether it was green or orange that disrupted the message. Um, so now we're gonna talk about coin shuffle plus plus. So in the paper, four things are discussed. First, um, the paper discusses how peer-to-peer -peer mixing uh, is, 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 um, is really, uh, a, a natural generalization of DC networks. Um, this is because when you have a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, mixing strategy in Bitcoin, we essentially have a bunch of peers that need to anonymously post uh, an address uh, for the mixing. And then they present, uh, number two, is the dice mix protocol, which solves uh, the two uh, issues I brought up with DC nets, namely collisions and with malicious peers. And what's really fascinating about this protocol is that it works in only four plus two F rounds, where F is the number of malicious peers. So given no malicious peers, the entire protocol will, will end in just four rounds. Um, and then we have Coin Shuffle Plus Plus, which applies dice mix to Bitcoin transactions to create decentralized and anonymous coin joints. And lastly, the the uh, the presents in general terms and peer to peer mixing protocols. Um, we're picking up some noise from. Hi, Tim. Yes, one of the author actually appeared. Oh, okay. So great. just a quick. 
quick quick what's going on we usually have a hangout link and yeah I, we just I just read your email yeah yeah uh, yeah so it we're gonna do coin shopper process again uh the next okay. week too it's it's quite difficult so i think two weeks is is, is good okay <laughs> it makes sense yeah. Oh, and, and don't forget to mute yourself when you're talking. Yep. Okay. All right, Ovi, you can continue. Yes. Uh, where am I? Where am I? There we go. Okay. So, um, okay, so Tim Ruffing is here, which is pretty exciting. Um, so, yeah, so now we're talking about Coin Shuffle Plus Plus because we covered DC networks. Um, so, Dice Mix requires only four plus two F rounds in the presence of F malicious peers. Um, okay, so I, I have to come clean and say that I f did not fully understand um, how and why um, uh, this uh, protocol works, uh, but uh, essentially the idea um, is that uh, users are, um, as opposed to uh, using messages uh, that are XOR together, uh, these DC net messages will be uh, power sums. Um, and so, uh, yeah, oh, sorry. And so um, then by using, uh, um, yes, uh, then, <coughs> excuse me, um, then the messages are extracted by uh, finding the roots of the polynomial. So um, I, I played around with this uh, myself quite a bit, and I tried to replicate this and look at the code for hints, um, but I struggled quite a bit. Um, but uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. So the idea is intentional collisions um, uh, with this protocol. Uh, yeah, and so the entire thing goes in four stages. Uh, firstly, a Diffie-Hellman key exchange between participants. Then the commitment phase, where uh, participants are committing what their message is going to be. Uh, and then there's the DC net phase, where uh, the uh, participants are using power sums over a finite field to uh, construct their own secure message. And then um, uh, there's the confirmation phase, uh, which is the end of a successful mix, where messages are made available and all participants have the same anonymous messages. Um, there are, uh, the way that Dice Mix handles uh, uh, malicious peers is by having eph ephemeral keys and by having participants uh, reveal their secret key and reveal paths that allows everyone to see who in fact is the malicious peer to then exclude them in the next round. So that, that's, that's how that's dealt with. Um, so here's an example of these communication rounds. So if you look at uh, the first run, number one, uh, you have the key exchange, then you have the commitment phase, then, um, uh, then you have the, um, the DC net. And because uh, the protocol could not uh, arrive at the confirmation phase, the secret keys are revealed and then the, uh, the, the pads are revealed, allowing um, uh, malicious uh, participants to be excluded. And so the protocol continues uh, over and over again until finally it reaches the confirmation uh, part of, of the protocol. Um, this is probably the most uh, interesting thing about this protocol, which is that it, it scales really, really well with more participants. Um, so in the original coin shovel protocol, there was a sequential uh, bit of work where users had to shuffle, uh, decrypt and shuffle uh, uh, addresses and then, and, and then pass them to the next peer uh, in order. And so because it was sequential, it did not scale very well, whereas this here uh, can happen at the same time. The only thing that causes it to scale worse as time goes on is that um, you have a more complexity when it comes to uh, factorization of the polynomial. And that, that's what's visible here in the green. Um, so, yeah, so 100 peers can essentially get through the protocol in uh, just over 20 seconds, which is pretty impressive. So, um, yeah, by using Dice Mix, 
um, instead of the original DC net, we can achieve guaranteed finality of the message protocol in four plus two F rounds, um, where users anonymously post their equal output fresh addresses. Collisions and disruptions are both effectively dealt with. Protocol scales efficiently, and uh, the authors claim that it's a substantial improvement to CoinShuffle, which required users to pass encrypted messages sequentially. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I wasn't 100% sure about the some parts, but hopefully we can ask questions now. Okay, I want to start with, with something of a segue. That's, uh, it's the most exciting thing probably that Lucas, when we were talking about CoinShopper, not CoinShopper plus plus, you figured out how to do it with an equal amount with the NAPSAC, third NAPSAC algorithm that's not in the paper. Can you elaborate on that and, and team may be able to, to reflect on that idea? Okay, yes, well, my, my idea was that the, in the paper, the snapshot paper, um, it, it details how uh, an equal output uh, conjoint transaction can be can be built, right? So, um, talking with the author of, of that uh, paper, um, he said, well, there is a, a one of my proposals that is not in the paper is that a, a, another protocol where you only need to know the, how much uh, the rest of participants want to participate with, I mean the, the amount, so the outputs can be um, split, split with uh, this um, um, NAPSAC algorithm in uh, and then are the participants and not a central server uh, who can create this unequal output without um, any interaction yes so they only need to know how much the rest of participants are going to participate with so my idea was <coughs> in the coin shuffle uh, protocol uh, if if we know that, if we know how much the rest are going to, to mix, every every participant knowing that can split the uh, the outputs, right? And the rest is exactly the same. I mean, they can just uh, create this onion layers of encryption with the public keys of the rest and the rest of participants do exactly the same i mean they just receive the the the, the addresses in this case are the outputs because if the address plus the the amount i mean let's call it the output and of course they don't know what the output outputs are they just shuffle those outputs and um, because otherwise, <laughs> in the final conjunct transaction, you, if they don't shuffle the outputs, you know the first outputs belong to this guy, the, this other uh, outputs belong to the next one. So they, they shuffle in the same way, exactly the same way. So the, the, the last participant, the one who finally decrypts uh, the, 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 the 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 layer of encryption, the last layer of encryption, it only see a lot of outputs uh, and all are unequal outputs. Uh, so I don't know if that makes sense for for me. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure if I got the 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 entire idea. To be honest, also I. I mean, I looked at the at the, at the NAPSEC paper once, but this is really like years ago or so. Um, 
it would be interesting to to know what exactly is um, is required to um, come up with the um, with, with the amounts here. So you basically you, you simply know you, what you said is that you just need to know the um, mixing amounts of all the others. Uh, yes. Isn't that already something that like the peers in the coin join probably don't want to, to tell each other? It, it is the inputs, right? So isn't that already just told everyone that what are the inputs? Well, okay, yeah. I mean, if right, if, if they're going to mix the full amount in the input, yes, to the public anyway. Okay. Um, so, but actually, there's a, <laughs> there's a second problem. Um, so, um, the problem with using amounts in general within within uh, something like coin shuffle, and I think here it really doesn't matter if this is now coin shuffle or or coin shuffle plus plus. It's actually in the um, what I described now is actually in the in the plus plus paper. Um, but it applies to, to normal coin shuffle as well. Um, so coin shuffle basically works by uh, by the idea that you um, use fresh addresses for your mixing. Like you, you take a new address, you input it to the to the mixing protocol, and again, it doesn't matter now if this is coin shuffle or coin shuffle plus plus. Um, and in the end, you can basically, uh, if, if something goes wrong, uh, you can de-anonymize this round and throw away your um, your new address because it, I mean, it has never been used, right? So um, it, it's never been used to receive money. It will never be used in the future. So it's okay to de-anonymize this round. Then, then you by de-anonymizing you can figure out who's malicious and kick him off, um, and then you can restart without the, the malicious guys. Yes. So your point is that the amount cannot be fresh. Right. Right. Yeah. So this is the this is the point. Like the amount is something what I um, call a fix. I think this is the term we use in, in the paper also. Um, and this is, um, yeah, th there's a simple attack once you, once you use, um, once you use fixed messages. Um, so like that, let's, let's, for example, say we all use, uh, let's say coin shuffle for, uh, for mixing, not a fresh Bitcoin address, but some real, I don't know, document, text file. Everybody has a text file. Um, now, what you can do is um, you can disrupt the first round um, by basically disrupting the last message of, of all participants in the sense that you you as the attacker on the network you learn you learn the output of the protocol it means you learn the, the set of all text files um, you, you don't know yet which file belongs to whom right because it's so far we are anonymous but you learn the, the set of all text files and um, what I can but what happens is because I, I disrupt the last run by just simply blocking it on the, uh, the last round. So if I simply by blocking it on the on the network, um, all the other guys have to restart because they think so. I'm offline or something. And then I I can block. So again, assuming I'm the network attacker, I can block some honest users messages um, on the network. So, um, in this, so this means that the, the second round also won't won't finish because there's another guy appears to be offline now. 
And now the, the the remaining participants still need to restart from scratch. They kick out the the honest peer that I uh, blocked. They kick kick him out too. Um, and now afterwards, let's say the the remaining peers that are still on the protocol now manage to to finish the protocol. And now let's say in the beginning we had five people, in, including me. So I, I went offline in the first run, then I, I blocked somebody in the second run, so there were three uh, three participants left now, and they have three text files. And I learned at the beginning all the five text files, so the, now I can just look at the two, at the, at the two that are missing now in, in, the, in the final output, and I know one of them is mine, so I know the other one is from the guy I blocked. Um, not sure if this was actually yeah, under yes, understandable. For me um, actually, so I can next week. I can I can bring some slides of them here. Um, that would be fantastic. And show them because anyway, I have I have slides for uh, for a lot of stuff in, in Coin Shuffle. But yeah, I think this is so. This is a generic attack. This works whenever I can. Uh, um, I can basically um, make uh, participants peer offline, maybe because I'm the network attacker or blocking their messages. And it's actually pretty pretty annoying in, in, in Coin Shuffle because, um, I mean, in, in the paper we, we say it's peer-to-peer, -peer and what, what, what we mean by that, it's basically peer-to-peer -peer on the, if you, if you look at the, at the, at the transaction that's generated, right? Because it's in the end, it's basically coin join. But if you want to do this efficient, you want to run it over a, a server or what we call a bulletin board, which is simply responsible for um, for broadcasting messages. And we don't trust it otherwise. That's the idea here. But as soon as you, as we everybody connect to a, a bulletin board, you can maybe maybe just think of an IRC server, untrusted IRC server. Um, what we, of course, uh, um, trust the server for is that it uh, doesn't exclude people arbitrarily from the protocol, right? It could say, okay, look, this is always Tim. I don't want Tim to have anonymity, so I exclude him always. And um, I think that's in the normal coin shuffle, that wouldn't be a big issue because, well, I mean, if the server doesn't like me, I can yell at it and, and use another one. Um, but like... In if you use fixed messages and uh, the attack that I mentioned earlier comes into play, then that's pretty annoying because, uh, like, if if I if I send all my broadcasts via the server, this, it's, very, it's very easy for the server to block my messages, right? It just server just needs to pretend that I that I went offline. So, um. yeah, make make makes perfect sense. Actually. Oh. Yeah, for me too. Yes. I mean, the, obviously, the, the problem is that we have to, we need to uh, kick the the bad participants out. Right. Uh, that's right. that's why this doesn't. That's my idea will not work. Uh, it's also, by yes. the way, if you, I'm not sure if this is on some future agenda. Maybe it is. Like. Um, I guess people also heard of of value shuffle, which is basically assuming, like assuming they have confidential transactions where you can hide the amounts. Then this is basically the combination of coin shuffle plus plus and confidential transactions. And there suddenly it works with uh, with mixing amounts because there the amounts are in in, um, in commitments, which which you can recreate and which are re-randomizable. So like if if you if you commit to the same value twice will result in a different commitment. And that's why those messages as inputs to, to the mixing protocol are not fixed in that sense anymore. But okay, it's just a remark. I mean, like, as long as we don't have CC. <laughs> that's... Yes, value shuffle was, yeah. or is in the agenda. Uh, okay. it, it was, the idea was for the next week, but the next week we we will continue with Right, okay. plus, plus. Yeah. Lucas, uh, <laughs> cash fusion. 
guest vision is in the agenda. Ah, oh, okay. I'd be right because I, I mean I didn't I didn't see it on the um, on the GitHub page. Yes, yeah, whatever. It's not it's yet just, a, <laughs> just, just a remark. Okay. All right. Uh, yes. On, on the other hand, like so, this is very very early stuff, but there are also so what, what would be interesting is to to have something. Uh, okay, let 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 me start differently. So. Um, I think the the attack that I that I here mentioned is so is so generic that it applies to pretty much every anonymity system we can think of, right? Like even if I send um, um, at least every, yeah, okay, that's maybe that's maybe too much. At least every every system where I don't trust my my peers, and actually this is how it's how it's written in the um, in in the paper. So I was I was thinking, um, and I'm just currently um, I'm working on this with uh, also with with Pedro again, Pedro Moreno Sanchez. Um, we're looking into relaxations of this model where you um, maybe have a few uh, trusted servers, but in the sense that, I don't know, maybe there are uh, 20 servers and you only need to trust one of them to be anonymous. Um, and I... Um, and maybe it's possible to to avoid this attack in, in such a setting because it basically the attack relies on the fact that uh, people can stop the protocol from from completing and it's it's uh, maybe interesting to see if, if we can uh, get around this using some trust but not maybe acceptable for some users i don't know However, now that I now that now that I say it again, I think it's pretty hard for uh, okay, whatever. I think what I, what I just said m makes only a little bit sense um, because we were looking at other other settings. I think if you really have coin join in mind, um, <laughs> that that. Uh, won't really work because in coin join in the end I can always refuse to to sign the the contract transaction right yes uh, so, for example if you would want to use value shuffle then doesn't matter because at the end you can always refuse so right, even if right. you could be that, yeah yeah so like even even if I somehow use whatever servers to uh, um avoid that I simply go offline during the actual mixing and and they can somehow continue the protocol. The rest of the people can continue the protocol without me. Um, <laughs> I still won't sign in the end. So, yeah. Um, of course, now you can say, look, I can I can do now weird stuff and, and do secret sharing with 20 servers, but it's probably not what I wanted to do. Hmm. Okay. I, I have another question. I, I have a yeah. lot, but this is important, and then let other people speak. That since we are doing this next week too, uh, what would you suggest? Uh, how would someone go and understand Coin Shuffle Plus uh, Plus? In what what steps you would do? Would you first look at the pseudo code and then move upwards and downwards of the paper, or? Yeah, what 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 would be a good way to to understand it? Because I have to admit too, I I did not fully understand, but I I, I really tried. Okay, yeah. Um, let me think about this. Um, I don't think it's a <laughs> it's a good way to to look at the pseudo code. I mean, the, the pseudo code in the paper is very detailed, but I think in that sense it's too detailed to to really. Um, um, understand the protocol from that one. The reason why we, why we wrote so detailed pseudo code is that in, in coin shuffle, it was rather in, in the, f so in the original coin shuffle paper, we, it, it's the description of the protocol was pretty high level. 
And some, some people try to implement, implement it and screw it up, so that's why we uh, we prefer to give the full truth, even though it's not it's it's hardly readable. <laughs> um, in the hope that if somebody really translates it from the paper uh, without having too uh, much background in crypto, doesn't uh, screw up entirely. Um, so I, I think. Um, I mean, I, I can, as I said, I can, I can, uh, I can bring slides and try to explain it in, in the way I would explain. But I think um, if you if you understand um, how a DC net works, which I think you looked at uh, last week, um, then I would then I would approach um, CoinShopper Plus Plus simply as a way to um, to set up a DC net. And then um, if, you, if you look at the, at the steps, um, as we also seen on your on your slides here, um, well, what, what do we need for a DC net? We need uh, shared symmetric keys. Okay, so in the, in the beginning we do key exchange. Um, then we need to um, run the actual DC net and um, here this, this trick with the, with the power sums is actually not too um, too essential for for an understanding of the of, at least not for, for a high level understanding of the, of the protocol um, it, um, it's simply a way to to encode messages, and it's a um, it's a clever way because it always works independently of of collisions. But it doesn't give you anonymity or anything like the entire anonymity is provided by um, by the DC net basically. Um, so it's just a different encoding of of things that we send through the DC net. Um, but it doesn't help in any sense in, in unlimited anonymity. It just makes sure that we can get the messages, um, that we can extract the messages later without uh, having any DC net collisions where some people, where there could be slots, for example, and some people send in the same slot and then you get the XO of the messages or, and you can't get the actual message back. So, thank uh, you. Yeah. Uh, so th th this is exactly what I want to sort of replicate, and I think Adam is probably thinking the same thing. You know, I, I would like to see that this that I understand the protocol with, like, let's say, a four-bit message and three participants. Yeah. Uh, that that I could do myself, and I and I was really struggling uh, to 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 do that. Um, so uh, maybe you can next week in the slides you can uh, you can you can show something uh, of that nature or or sort of walk through uh, step by step because I, I I wasn't entirely clear. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, can I can try, try to do that. Um, right. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, I personally I I until I don't code something I don't understand. And I yeah. coded over the papers that we we were discussing so far, so I felt I have a good understanding. But uh, but but this one I I couldn't. I was trying to go through the pseudo code. But but you have some functions. Those are very cryptographic functions, and and uh, it's it's not just right. You have the building blocks. The, sign message, uh, verify message, it's just normal cryptography. But then you have some some much stranger cryptography like the Diffie-Hellman key exchange, which which I'm not sure what the inputs and outputs should be. So uh, yeah, that, that's where I got stuck personally. Okay, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so to be honest, uh, there is a reason why I never wrote an implementation of this, and, and I still want to do, um, but I never managed. And I think not because it's not not possible, but it's just because it's it's a it's a very large project. 
um, even though it's um, it's already simplified from uh, from from the first coin shuffle. So actually, when 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 we were writing the second paper, the coin shuffle plus plus, people contacted us to because they were interested in doing an implementation of the other one. And and we we even told them, look, like I think the new protocol is actually easier. Um, it's better in every aspect. Just throw away your <laughs> what you've written so far and start from scratch. Um, of course, they, they weren't happy with the, with the suggestion and didn't take it. Um, yeah. So, what do you yeah. think is the reason? Yes. The 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 reason why be, well, the reason for what, why 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 coin shuffle got implemented uh, like three or four times? I don't know, but uh, coin shuffle plus plus did not. Oh, that, that's an interesting question. I don't know, to be honest. I mean, the the story that I just mentioned, okay, I mean, there it was the case that, like, just the new thing wasn't wasn't out yet, so they couldn't know about it. Um, for the other instances, I think just the plus plus paper didn't get so much um attention um there are also there are some some papers that cite the first version and not the second version which is kind of okay if if you depending on how many on how many citations you want to have in your paper this is this is perfectly appropriate but i sometimes feel that just people overlook the the new version um also maybe because we uh didn't uh like the title was not super clever because it's called it doesn't have coin shuffle plus plus in the title right so if, if we if we would have put that into the title then i guess it would just show up when people google coin shuffle um <laughs> <laughs> but that's i don't know i'm just I'm, I'm randomly guessing here so um it's an interesting question another another reason why why really people should go prefer coin shuffle plus plus is um i think this is something that only really was very clear to us when we worked on the on the plus plus version um is that um actually um kicking people so in, in coin shuffle in, in the normal coin shuffle it's easy to to deal with cases where people send wrong messages and and um, a lot of um, a lot of the um, work in the protocol is figuring out who, who sent wrong messages and kick them out um, it's however in this structure where you uh, like the first peer sends to the second one and the second one sends to the third and so on in this in such a structure it's much harder to to deal with peers that appear offline like uh, what if the um, third guy doesn't receive a message or claims that it doesn't receive a message from the second guy who's to blame right the second or the third and how do you agree on now sh sh should we kick out the third or the, or the second one and i think for um if if you have a closer look at this um what you really want in the end is again uh, something like a like a broadcast channel which we then in coin shuttle plus plus have anyway because we describe it like this and then you have just the server this this untrusted ioc server in the middle that uh, has the final decision over whether some peer sent a message or not, but then at least it's the same decision for everybody. Um, so you have to kind kind of have this uh, uh, broadcast functionality built in. And um, of course now you, you could go go back to coin shuffle and implement it via the same way. So instead of sending the first peer to the second, uh, from, instead of send, letting the first peer send to the second one, the second to the third, and so on. It's just everybody sends to the uh, to the IRC server in the middle. Um, yes, you could do this, of course, but then it kind of it, you waste communication, right? Because like the the only advantage of the of the normal coin shuffle protocol would be that it um, that you don't need this this broadcast in a sense because you only need to talk to the next guy. 
But yeah, as I just explained, I think this is not really an advantage. So. Interestingly, I misunderstood CoinShop uh, the first time and I implemented a broadcast protocol. I implemented it in a broadcast way, not in a in a one okay. guy talks to the next guy. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, it worked. <laughs> yeah. Now, I think like, okay, I think like, uh, assuming that you have the, the broadcast, I think then crypto-wise, the, the first protocol is is a little bit easier because this layered encryption uh, doesn't have, yeah, it's it's just encryption, right? There's no, no weird problem. Yeah, it's so just it. encryption, nothing else. It's a layered encryption. Yeah. yeah. On, on the other hand, um, Another thing that we figured out when we were looking at the second um, um, version is um, a lot of complexity in 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 Coin Shuffle One is um, about getting the cases right in when some when something goes wrong. Then you have a lot of additional potential additional messages that that peers need to send and then you have a huge basically a case distinction on uh, on t t just to figure out who is to play and um, this is also something that is easier in in coin shuffle plus plus i actually don't know if we if we wrote it like that in the paper but i think we did um, a general insight there was that um, anyway, the, the method there is that you, if, if you, if you, um, abort a round, which basically means you want to de-anonymize the round entirely, what, what you do is you reveal the, um, the secret from your key exchange, which basically is the only secret information you have in this round, except for your, Bitcoin signing key, okay. You obviously shouldn't reveal that one. Um, but like for from the mixing itself, the the um, um, Diffie Hammond secret is the only secret in the protocol. This means that as soon as everybody, as, as soon as you reveal your secret, um, what you send is entirely deterministic, and this is, makes it very easy to um, to implement. Um, the, the blaming procedure that should figure out who uh, who misbehaved because now what you can do is um, I I learn your secret now um, so and I and I know your message by looking at the the protocol so what I can do is just replay your entire protocol messages recompute them and just compare them bit by bit to what you actually send. And if you send something else, well, then, then you misbehave. Um, I can just do this for every peer. So it's, uh, it's, it's much easier to, uh, to implement than uh, having this huge case distinction. Mm -hmm. uh, Lucas, Aviv, Rafael, uh, do you have something to yes. discuss questions? Uh, I have a question because while we have been um, studying these ideas and discussing this idea, we started with Gun Shuffle. Then, instead of just jumping directly to Gun Shuffle Plus, plus we, we review the DC network, right? And in, in what I see is that. Uh, Part of the complexity, a big part of the complexity of the of this, this protocol, is about this, about the the communication layer, how we communicate with others. Yes. So, uh, why are? <laughs> sorry, I don't remember the paper in details. Sorry, probably is everything is there. But why do you think that's the best mechanism? instead of using something like Tor, for example, what could simplify the, the protocol a bit? You mean using, the, do you mean using Tor as the protocol or the Tor network as the built thing? 
Which, which one do you mean? Uh, because we are discussing how to, I mean, uh, 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 difficult man for uh, create a, an, an encryption key, a shared key, right? Uh, how to broadcast, how to blah blah. <laughs> I think it that could be uh, simplified by just communicating with the rest of the peers uh, through talk, for example. Uh, I mean, why are we using DC networks? Yeah, so I think w w what you're saying makes makes perfect sense. And I think if you like, um, there, there's a trade-off, and I think there's a reason why, um, like the existing <laughs> control implementations, and Adam here is the. Uh, Adam's implementation, I think, is the the one that, that should be mentioned here. Actually, works uh, by leveraging Tor um, because then suddenly the protocol becomes much easier. I mean, of course, to, to organize coin join, it's not just it's just not just using Tor. Um, you need more, like like uh, for example, line signatures. Um, but uh, the entire thing becomes uh, way simpler. Uh, the reason why why we why we wrote this paper is that we think it's interesting to have a protocol where you don't rely on Tor. Um, also, and mainly because it gives you it gives you stronger anonymity guarantees, right? Tor is Tor is optimized for different settings, so. Um, in anonymous communication, there's always a trade-off between, uh, yeah, between multiple efficiency and security um, dimensions. Um, something like a DC, a DC net is pretty slow com compared to Tor, um, but it's it's fully anonymous. Like by observing the network, you can't you can't tell anything. Whereas in Tor, they optimize for for low latency, which is very important if you um, if you look at websites because you don't want to wait forever. Um, but like, but there are in Tor, you have two anonymity drawbacks, right? So if you uh, first you trust your Tor nodes, and of course you, you don't trust them fully, right? This is a distributed trust. Um, for example, like if your if your uh, guard node and your exit node uh, work together, they have a good chance of denormalizing you. And the same is true for an uh, attacker that just listens to the network but can do end-to-end -end timing correlation. Um, And, and I think the reason why Tor made this straight up is, is, is what I said. Like they want low latency because it should be usable for for uh, um, for web browsing. But here, actually, I think we are in a different setting, um, and we can actually have stronger anonymity by something like like a DC net. Okay, I have another question. Uh, and, and again, sorry, I I couldn't read 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 the, the paper. No, no, sure. I, <laughs> Go ahead. I don't remember. But in this okay. case, how, 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 uh, how? I mean, the message is clear. It's encrypted, right? So it, nobody can read that. But how is the communication, the communication mechanism? Uh, how is it that it prevents uh, learning the IP addresses of the participants? Oh, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. That's a simple answer. Okay, uh, sorry. In, um, in, 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 I, please let me uh, let me check if I understand correctly. In coin shuffle, yeah. at least, given you only communicate with the next guy, so in that case, only one IP. So, so only one one participant knows about your IP, right? Okay. In that case, is in this case is the is in this case the same or or not? 
It, I think this this depends on how you implement it, but let, let me explain it in a different way, maybe first. Um, so I think when when we talk about anonymity and, and what we actually talk about is unlinkability. You shouldn't be able to link uh, pieces of data together in the sense that they belong to the same guy. And now. Uh, we have unlinkability uh, on on different layers here. Um, so what um, what Coin Shuffle is or Coin Shuffle Plus Plus is supposed to give you is unlinkability between your input address in the Coin Join and your output address in the Coin Join. Um, now, what you're asking about is unlinkability between the input address in your coin join and your IP address. And that's another relevant question, but it's it's a different question. Um, now, because you mentioned Tor, um, Tor kind of gives you uh, some unlinkability between your IP address and, and whatever data you send, right? So it also, in a sense, it hides your it hides your IP address. Um, that's why, actually, in, in the in the paper, we we say um, if you if you care about that second form of unlinkability of of uh, not being able to link network identifiers such as IP addresses to your messages, um, if you care about this too, and probably you care, right? Because if you care about privacy, you probably care about privacy on all layers. Um, then you should actually use Tor to to run uh, to run Dice Mix or to run Coin Shuffle Plus Plus. Um, which is another reason why uh, the implementation with the uh, the idea with the server in, in in the middle and plant signatures and where we send over a Tor has an advantage because there we use Tor for for two different aspects, and we only need it once. Um, but like, if you if you would run Coin Shuffle Plus Plus without Tor, which I think was the second part of your question, then it really depends on um, on really how you organize your network. Like, if you if you run it uh, as as we propose in the paper with the uh, with the server in the middle. Uh, that's only trusted for for basically doing the broadcast right, and you don't trust it for anonymity um, or one on for let's really say for unlinkability between in inputs and outputs on the mixing. Um, then it's it's just the case that everybody connects to the server, right? So the only guy that learns your IP addresses in the end is is that server. Of course, you don't want to, to trust it, but it's 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 better than 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 sharing your IP address with everybody, right? Um, so so I think like the basic the basic guarantee of Coin Shuffle Plus Plus is also is always there. Also, if you run it without um, without Tor, if you additionally want to hide IP addresses, then it's it's a good idea to run it over Tor or some other. Um, Anonymity network. Since we are a dystopic, you have the 20 second benchmark there in the paper. Uh, so, how would it change with Tor? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, it's certainly slower, of course. Um, but it's an interesting question. I hope it's not too much, but I. I I mean, to, to figure out, I think we need to, we need to, to, would need to test it. I mean, my hope is that it wouldn't be terrible because, um, I think bandwidth wise, Tor is mostly okayish nowadays. Um, and one of the advantages of the protocol is that it has, yeah, constant number of rounds. So, like latency-wise, um, yeah, it's it's not so important to have uh, super low super low latency because you have only four rounds. And um, I think the the 
the most annoying thing about Tor would be um, that, like in in the in the experiment in the paper, um, we assumed that like everybody connects to uh, to this middle node, this podcast server in the middle, and they all have the same uh, bandwidth to the to the middle node which is the, the optimal setting. And because the protocol is synchronized, so for every round, you need to wait for the last message from every, everybody. And basically, the borderlet is the slowest peer. And then if you imagine like 50 peers connecting via Tor, um, then they probably have just already by the, not only because their internet connection is uh, has different bandwidths, just by a random selection of Tor, uh, Tor routers, um, they will have different bandwidths. And then we have to, to wait for the slowest one in every of the four rounds. I, I can actually tell exactly uh, how much is this, is this slowest peer is going to be because in Wasabi, we encountered right, yeah. have to. the same issue. And yeah. uh, we the, some rounds, rounds were failing and we were not suspecting those attack. And then we started logging that the peers, those are replying with the message too late. And it turns out we had to elevate the timeout to two minutes. I still have no idea why it had to be that large, why they are replying so late, but some the slowest peers are replying in fucking two minutes. So it's uh it's not yeah, two, very encouraging. No. Yeah, two two minutes is very long. If they're not if they're not malicious and doing it intentionally late. Um but, but don't take this as face value that much because another thing that we realized is when they have to Query the whole transaction, which is, uh, I don't know, a kilobyte or, yeah, maybe a kilobyte. Then they are replying slower than when they have to query the just, just, just some, some small random data, which, which is interesting because it should not be the case because the issue with Tor is the rounds, the communication rounds and not the amount of data. So, so there is that. Uh, maybe it's one minute. Mm, I don't think half a minute, but yeah. Sorry, just a, uh, the the. I I suspect that the problem is we are using a new circuit. A new circuit means a new negotiation, and all a lot of cryptography and handshake with the entry point and finding a, a hidden service directory to, to make it, that it is like a DNS for hidden services, right? And all that negotiation, sometimes it's really fast and sometimes it's really slow because it, in, in fact, it, it has to query, a, 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 I don't remember, directory authority or something like that. So it's really heavy. The, the the creation of a new circuit. Once the circuit is 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 done, well, the communication is 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 quite decent. The 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 performance. I mean, the, the bandwidth. Actually, uh, we are using new streams. That's a little bit different, and those streams are already built up. And actually because I, I broke tests for it. When a stream is not built up yet, then the, then a tour is going to just put it in an already used stream. So it doesn't want to ruin our performance. Anyway, we are, we are, we are going uh, out of the topic. Uh, Rafael, do you have something? Not really. I'm just thinking about all the stuff you've been talking about. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Yeah, if uh, if if one of the rounds fails, um, uh, all of the participants have to uh, reveal their messages. Correct. Right. In, in, in the presence of a malicious party, so. Um, uh, I'm just thinking practically speaking, um, it would mean that if, if we're working with like a, like a wallet and, uh, and it, it, it reveals its, its addresses, those addresses can never be used again, right? Right. I think that that's, the, that's one of the um, fundamental ideas that you basically you you really use a address that you never basically used before and then if you if you know you throw it away you will also never use it in the future okay that's pretty clear um so have, have are you familiar I, I mean this might be very rude but but are, are, are you well familiar with with zero link and what uh, how wasabi is working um i'm not sure i i know a little bit um Maybe, maybe 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 just um, explain what what you want to say and it, it, I, I can see curious. if I can follow. <laughs> I'm just curious if, if if from where you're, you're from your research, if you think that Wasabi would be more secure or safer or, 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 or better if it was using a Coin Shuffle plus plus model, um, because right now uh, Wasabi uses you know uh, a, a server that. Um, that uh, does a blind signing of of uh, secret outputs. Um, right. But yeah. I so this I, is similar to what we've talked about, but yeah. Uh, I think um, ignoring all other trade-offs, I think such a model would be would be preferable, really, because it provides. A stronger form of anonymity, and it doesn't rely on on Tor. So, um, but but as I said, there there are trade-offs, and uh, I I I still hope that it's possible to to implement um, Coinshares plus plus in a in a meaningful way, um, and. It's, but and, and if assuming we we have such an implementation and assuming I somehow that at some point in the future we really really, really do it because I still want to do it. Um, the question is really like how would it perform in in practice? Because four rounds, of course, is the is the optimal case and it's kind of nice. Um, but if you have uh, peers dropping off for whatever reason you add rounds and you have to restart and um, now if, if Adam is, is telling me okay like even even with with wasabi or with zero link we already have like timeouts of, of two minutes yeah <laughs> that's, that's larger than I expected to be honest um, but I, I think it's it's something that that really we we, we should look into um, because I said I think like from a um, from a privacy point of view it's actually the um, the, the stronger model. Also, not relying on Tor gives you the advantage that um, some people may not be able to to use Tor for for various reasons, and here they they still get a meaningful anonymity guarantee. Whereas, uh, if you if you really rely on Tor, the yeah, either you can run it or you or you cannot. Uh, at one point, uh, your uh, co-authors m mentioned uh, cash shuffle, and he said that it was not a correct representation of coin shuffle. I'm just curious if, if you know anything about that and and, and why that was the case. Um, who. Uh, which of my authors was, was talking? Was, uh, Pedro. Okay. Yeah, I um, I, I don't know what what he was. Ref I mean, I can't tell for sure what he was referring to, but 
And when when Cash Shuffle came out, I had I had a look at the at the um, at the implementation, and I found multiple uh, pretty severe flaws. Of course, then it was still a GitHub project uh, in the early days and, and not really used. Um, I think they uh, they fixed these flaws. At least they. They, they told me, and actually I reported them on, on GitHub. Um, yeah, as far as I know, uh, now people have looked at the, at, the, at the implementation and it seems better, but I have never looked at it again. I mean, at the beginning, because the, the, the flaws were so heavy, I actually warned people uh, about this on, on Twitter and thought, like, look, this is broken. Um, and then various people yelled at me <laughs> uh, for uh, for doing this. Um, so what I heard is that they that they really improved, but I, I seriously I've never looked at it again, so I, I don't know if they really improved. Just to be sure, they implemented Coin Shuffle, not Coin Shuffle Plus. That's Right, they, they implemented Coin Shuffle. Um, this was another. Um, this was one of the mentioned instances where it also. Um, it also looks a little, little bit suspicious, right? Because I think, I mean, I, I told you maybe it's a little bit harder to find the plus plus version, but I think if you, if you before you start such a project, at least it, that's the way I would do it. I would first do. Uh, a lot of research on, on the background and, and try like uh, look look at various trade-offs and, and, and different approaches. And I think like if you if you do that work, you you should uh, find Coin Shuffle plus plus. And I think this was also reason why it looked to me a little bit like okay, they didn't really spend time thinking about uh, what what they actually want. And, I mean, I can give you an alternative why Coin Shuffle is being implemented, not Coin Shuffle plus plus. Yeah, it's, it's because, so for me, when I looked at the Coin Shuffle paper, I was like, oh fuck, I got it. I, I got the basic idea right away. Uh, I can just work out everything from there by myself, even if I don't read the real, the, the paper very carefully. With Coin Shuffle plus plus, I was reading it very carefully, but I still don't get the essence of the <laughs> okay. thing. Yeah, sorry for that. Yeah, yeah I have to. I have to concede oh. as well uh, that I, I'm. I'm going to try again for another week, uh, and I might email you uh, um, personally or, or or your co-authors. But I didn't understand the idea either. Okay, I guess <laughs> that's yeah, also. also partially our responsibility, right? Because like, if, if you write a paper, the goal is that people understand <laughs> it. Um, yeah. Um, but it's, so it would be a DC net, right? But you have previous and later phrases, which guarantees uh, some, some uh, properties of the DC net that in the original DCNet protocol, it's not guaranteed. Is that a good way to think about it? I think that that's a that's a good way to think about it. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe one thing I can add here, but now like. Of course, there's not the danger that this even confuses you more. Uh, <laughs> I hope not. Um, there is actually maybe I can I can put a link here. Um, okay, I, I'm putting the link here, but but really don't I, I don't want to say don't don't look at it. But this is really like not not explained in a in a in a proper way. So please please don't look at it if you want to understand uh, of or anything. Um, but actually. Because like the the protocol is pretty pretty involved, um, I also worked on a um, on a simpler version of it, which basically raises it to four plus three F rounds, but it's 
conceptually simpler and closer to original DCNet. And but this is totally not not ready. And the pseudocode there's there's basically there's just a little bit of text and a long pseudocode. I think the pseudocode is not even consistent with itself. So it's really work in progress. And if 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 you if you look at it, don't don't understand, don't try to understand it because like I think you won't understand it just because it's broken the way it's written there. Um, but but I just want to to point out that yeah, like. Uh, even even when I wanted to, uh, when, when I thought about implementing this, I, I wondered how this can be simplified because it's, it's the core protocol is pretty complex, I think. Yeah. Um, that, that's great, thank you. And so when I, I think like uh, earlier I mentioned that I was looking into some some other models uh, with, with Petro recently, and I think one of the things he also wants to do is uh, drive this a little bit further to uh, get a simpler, a little bit simpler protocol, which also would be computationally a little bit faster at, at the expense of adding around maybe. But. So can you clarify yeah. the, the link you sent us? Um, I, I actually happen to have read this in, in, entire thing as well, as well as the simple okay. code. code. Um, it didn't help that much in understanding. I think that, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, if, I think it doesn't help at all. It's, it's more like my personal notes than uh, anything ready to be understood. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, yeah, just this is already, this is yes. already interesting for, for me. Um, like if, if you all look, look at the paper and no one really understands it, maybe you also have to uh, um, make it ex more accessible to, to people. My, my idea is that I'm going to just jump right to the pseudo code and try to code it uh, well, jump right to the building box, try to code the building box, and then back to the, and then to the pseudo code, and then hope for the best. <laughs> I think one one of the annoying things that always appeared with, with this is that I think like when when I when I take time to to look at this again. Um, what what always bothers me is really that you also need some uh, some some broadcast layer to 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 do this, and I always had this um, on on my mind when I was trying to implement it. But but I guess I should just forget about this for a moment and really write the um, write the, the the crypto part of it. And for forget about networking, and then uh, I mean because it's really like a layered thing, right? So it's a different layer. But uh, somehow, uh, do you think a simple peer-to-peer -peer network that's using hash cache could work, or is just a flawed idea from the beginning, like bit message, right? Um, I think that that's that's too much um, because it's I guess too. Too slowish. I think like uh, this is something similar to 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 zero link comes already close, right? Like something where people can connect via Tor. I mean, they wouldn't have to, but they can. And it's a kind of a central point that helps um, helps organizing. Um, and also, you, you, I think you have the same problem, right? You need to 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 uh, find peers to to mix with in the first place, right? I think that's a that's one of the other hard problems that's ignored in, in all the <laughs> all the mixing papers I've written. <laughs> hmm.
Yeah, sorry, I was just taking a note for my stuff. So, I don't know you guys have anything, but regarding the administration, so obviously you said you can actually record this session. Did you? Yes. It's recorded. I cannot hear you. Is it only me? It's recorded. Hello? Yes, I can, uh, I can hear you. Yeah. We can yeah, hear you. Yeah. Alan? Okay, it seems Alan is good. Uh, sorry, I I'm here uh, for some reason. Uh, I couldn't hear anything. Could you repeat that? It, it's recorded. Uh, so, yeah, if there are no further questions, I, I think we should probably let uh, uh, Tim uh, get back to his work. Um, so are, are there any other questions? Yes, yeah, so because we said in the beginning that it's not going to be recorded, it's going to be just a warm-up. Uh, does anyone have any objections on publishing this? I think it's good material. Uh, I think we we should pub, uh, publish it. No, no. When when it's published, then I really have a public commitment that I that I'll be there next week and have slides, right? So <laughs> maybe we should do it. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can cut out that part. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm good. All right. Then uh, I don't know. Do you guys have any topics? No, I just have a comment because uh, you know uh, a decentralized uh, protocol for conjoining bitcoins is great, and if you don't need to use Tor, it's even better, right? The problem is that we, if we use some kind of bulletin board, a centralized one then probably we need to use store <laughs> to go uh, to, to hit that server so it's uh, it's a pity I, I think the decentralized the peer-to-peer -peer communication is is required otherwise all the benefits i think go away Yeah, I, I was thinking a similar thing. Uh, the, the advantage is that uh, people wouldn't have to close their tour circuit. They could keep their tour circuit open uh, for the entire round. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I think th there are two things, right? Like, uh, yes, so I, I, I agree. I would love to have a protocol that's that's fully decentralized um i think no no one no one figured it out so far um yeah at least here the advantage should be that as you say like you don't need to rely on on multiple uh tour circuits but if you think in the end you really want to to connect tour to the center uh, so to use tour to connect to the central point and then you can really ask the question like okay is it is it worth all the hassle yeah? Oh, there is one, one more thing, uh, Tim, uh, you remember of the CoinJoin meetup. Tell me. Do, do you remember the CoinJoin meetup? Yeah, sure, the... but I, I, I yeah, don't me... remember that, that one other point, I think. Because I didn't say it yet. <laughs> so okay. my, my, my point is that <laughs> one of the problem with pay to endpoint or or it's it's quite a general problem that how do you how do you establish connection between one party and another without breaking the existing user workflow. And there might be a way at least, you know, with top root with top root, the public key is going to be exposed in the in the address. Oh yeah, okay. You mean you can do some form of sneaker? Uh huh. So now what we can do is that when you give me your Bitcoin address to pay you money, uh, then I can encrypt the message 
to your public key and then broadcast it to the network. You, were li you are listening to, to that message and then you decrypt that message, only you can decrypt it. And then uh, that message actually contains my, my core endpoint and we actually have a, a peer-to-peer uh, communication between the two of us. So, <laughs> and then the, the user doesn't even know that it's not a normal Bitcoin transaction. And then you can do pay to endpoint, uh, merge avoidance, uh, even a lightning transaction in the background. So I think that's, uh, that's, that's, that's exciting anyway. <laughs> oh, that, that's great. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, a, a kind of booster pay or something like that could be possible too. I mean, the two parties can join for payment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah, pay, no, yes. I, I agree. I think one of the hard things is really like establishing initial um, connections and then I think if, if you figure that out clearly, then uh, you can do a lot of stuff. Yeah, exactly. And you don't even have to... Uh, the Bitcoin address, as far as I understand, the cryptography can be reused for any other purpose because you are just encrypting the, a message that can be decrypted, whoever owns the public, whoever owns the private key. So based on that message that you encrypt, it's a question. You cannot figure out which Bitcoin address you are encrypting a message to. Is that correct? Um, so there are, there are encryption schemes where you just from the encrypted message, you don't see for which public key it's encrypted. Yeah. Is that what's being used in, in a subgroup? <laughs> Uh, well, I think, yeah, so, I mean, Tempro doesn't use encryption, right, but like... Okay, I'll uh, right. I mean, the, the, right, so the, the, pub, um, the public keys are elliptic curve keys, and there are elliptic curve encryption schemes where you can't tell uh, for which public key uh, ciphertext is. Um, so, so that exists. I think you still need to do something because... Um, Ah, well, it depends. Uh, depends on how many messages you get, right? Uh, because <laughs> if if you if you can't easily tell from the message that it's for that it's for you, you need to uh, you need to try to need to try to decrypt every message just to, just to figure out if it's if it's for you, and this can be expensive. But uh, yes, yeah. exactly. But it's not a problem because. You know when is the message coming. So at that point of time, you start listening right. to the yes. And yeah, yeah. yeah right. It's actually easier. In, in as, as for example, in, in Monero, they have a similar model, right? Where you basically you have to look at every <laughs> every, every transaction on the blockchain and, and try to receive it because you don't know if it's a transaction for you or not. <laughs> um, but here you uh, here it's a little bit different, right? Because you don't need to. You only need to listen at that point in time. It's, it's a good point. Anyway, uh, we'll get back to this idea after top route is deployed. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Ten years later. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know what's interesting in your coin shuffle paper or coin shuffle plus? plus I don't know. In one of the paper, I think the coin shuffle, the 2014. Even that was talking about uh, <laughs> segment. Wait, no.